Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Elizabeth Gaines, CEO and founder of Children's Funding Project. Today, I am so thrilled to be joined by Mayor Jim Kenney of Philadelphia. Hello. Mayor Kenney, hello. Um, mayor Kenney has served as the city's mayor since 2016, and during that time, has been really a dedicated advocate for children and youth and their families in the city. And one of the hallmarks of his time in office has been the passage of the Philadelphia beverage tax, which has provided, I think at this point, Mayor Kenny, over $171 million. Yeah, it's about that, about that number, yeah. Yeah, so for quality pre-K programs for three and four-year-olds, and then an additional $26 million going to community schools in the city. Um, Philly's one of the few cities in the country that's been able to levy this kind of tax and put it to good use like this. So um, we're just excited to hear more about it. And um, you received a lot of attention at the time when you were doing this, good and bad. And I, I would just love to hear a little bit of a retrospective now, six years on, um, of how it's all gone and, and how you made some of those tough decisions and how it's benefited you know, children and families in the city. So let's just well, start by having you talk a little bit about why you did it. Well, when we started the campaign in 2015, uh, we ran on a pro-education platform, uh, pre-K, early childhood education. Also, we ran on a platform of a community school model uh, and also our re rebuild program, which was also funded by the beverage tax to uh, kind of rebuild our recreation centers, libraries, and our parks. Uh, those that hadn't seen much uh, love and attention in quite some time. A lot of those uh, recreation facilities are in neighborhoods that are struggling with poverty and education to begin with. So kind of as a holistic way of approaching poverty uh, through education, through uh, special help at the school base level for food and clothing and uh, medical care, all that kind of stuff. And also uh, trying to give a high quality recreation space uh, to kids who don't see a lot of positivity in their lives. So the theory was that if you go, if you don't have a pre-K experience, you're less, less likely to do as well as you would in school. If your school experience is, is, is subpar uh, and you don't have enough support at home uh, or in the community and you're, the place you go after school to play looks like, looks like a, you know, a third world rec center, um, there's really very little hope you have growing up uh, that things are going to be any different. Um, I think that, that, that the most important thing any government can do, and I wish the U.S. government and the state government here in Pennsylvania would do it, is provide a thorough education for people. Uh, the more educated you are, the less likely you are to be in poverty, the less likely you are uh, to have an addiction, the less likely you are to be involved in the criminal justice system. Uh, and I think that we've really missed a boat as a country uh, by not having comprehensive, free university education available uh, to all its citizens. Uh, if you look at countries like Canada, uh, and places in Europe, uh, and other, even in China, um, you can go to college for free. Here, you have to go into debt for, you know, half a million dollars, half a million dollars, and stay in debt your most of your adult life. It's kind of crazy. Yeah. So we we, we decided um, you know, we pursue the beverage tax that had been pursued in past administration, uh, but the past administration viewed it as a kind of a health issue, uh, and people rejected telling me or telling them. Uh, what they were going to drink or what they were going to eat. Um, but when we tied the revenue from the tax to these programs specifically, people began to understand uh, that, you know, it wasn't just coming out of their pocket. You had to make a choice to buy a sweetened beverage. So it wasn't like it was a real estate tax increase or a, or a wage tax increase or a business tax increase. It was something you chose to do or not to do. Um, and if you did, you chose not to do it, you're probably going to be healthier for it. Uh, if you chose to do it, then you were going to support these programs, which which have turned out to be really, um, really terrific. Um, the first couple of years was was rocky because uh, when you talk about big, I call them big soda because they are big soda. They're like they're like big, big tobacco, you know, big pharma, um, and they got a lot of money and they tied us up for two years in court. Uh, they they conducted a you know kind of a negative campaign on in the media and on you know and television and print. Um, to turn people against voting for it, number one, and then secondly, uh, tied us up a court where we couldn't spend a the full amount of money for like two years. So we are, we're a little bit behind. Uh, right now, we have about 13,000 students that have been through this pre-K. Uh, we're, we we're, we're targeting, 
by the end of my term, which is January 2024, to have 15,000 kids affected by it. Uh, and this program is growing from 2,000 seats a year to 4,300 seats a year. Um, we have, I think, 26 schools that are now uh, in a, a, a community school model. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're in the process of either completing or in design for about 30 recreational facilities throughout the city, uh, whether they're class A rec centers with a, a gymnasium and, a, and athletic fields, or whether they're smaller parks, uh, green spaces, and the like. I mean, we just want to create an environment in our communities where everybody gets treated equitably. Um, you know, we have kids in our rebuild program, you know, we have kids who play in, uh, you know, organized sports of football, say, so for example, uh, they play teams in the suburbs. Uh, they go out on the bus to the suburban uh, football field and it's all manicured and there's stands and, you know, concession stands and, and locker rooms and, and our kids are playing at a dust bowl uh, in North Philly somewhere or in South Philly. So we, we we're correcting, we're trying to correct as much as we can with the revenue we have. Yeah, and, and just back on what you were saying about the, the sort of federal government responsibility, so many mayors are coming to us saying, we want to we wanna do something now. We can't wait for the yep. federal government to do something, particularly when it comes to something like pre-K, right? right. So, um, you know, what would you, what would you say to them about sort of <clears throat> how, to, how to approach philanthropy, how to approach advocates in their cities to, to build the coalition to get something like this done? I mean, I would say have the courage to just introduce the tax and start building your coalitions. I mean, the big soda had every lobbyist in Philadelphia and Pennsylvania tied up uh, on the payroll trying to beat this down. Um, we had we our lobbyists were preschool moms and dads, were park advocates, were library advocates. And it didn't matter what the lobbyists were saying to them because they knew in the end what they were going to get out of this program. Uh, and, um, you know, our hearings. We actually we passed the beverage tax in 2016 by a count of 14 to three. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a 17 member council, uh, and that was a really lopsided that I, more than I expected uh, in favor of it. I expected a nine eight vote or something, and have to fight uh, a veto or whatever. Uh, have to fight a um, you know a override. Yeah. Um, so uh, I think getting all those folks together uh, in one group. Of people. Um, and the other thing they have to explain is it's not only just the educational aspects of it. It's not only just giving a kid, uh, a, you know, a, a leg up on their studies for life. Um, we created over 600 jobs in the early education space, um, uh, you know, uh, with with good with good salaries uh, for for that in, for that uh, you know, that industry. Uh, we also the other thing I, I, I learned personally from a parent, a mom who came up to me on the street, she said that she had two kids in PHL pre-K and thank you for the program she had, but the important part, one of the other important parts is I just got a, uh, I just got a job driving a bus for SEPTA, our, our regional uh, transportation agency, because she said she had to stay home with the kids uh, and couldn't go to work. So now I got two, two children in school getting a, a great education or a great start in her education. And I got a mom who used to stay home is now improving their uh, financial situation by having a full-time job. Uh, so I, didn't realize that that was going to be another positive fallout from it. Right. So to the argument of this isn't good for business or this is going to hurt jobs, et cetera. Exactly. These exactly. are jobs that benefit our kids and families. So let me tell you something. I mean, uh, big supermarkets uh, basically use soda as a loss leader. Mm -hmm. They actually give it away for the most part uh, to get people into the store. Um, you know, Pepsi and Coke were complaining they were going to have to lay off workers. There's ads in the paper, uh, you know, on, online every week talking about openings of Coke and Pepsi. Um, yeah. You have to remember that one, one, I think it was, I'm not sure it was Coke or Pepsi, but probably it was Coke. We, the one year they were arguing we shouldn't pass the tax, they netted $5 billion of profit. Right. I mean, I, I, and I'm happy for you and I'm glad you're successful, but don't be such a pig about it. I mean, we, and we're not even asking you, you can pass it on. We, right. we didn't even ask you, it's not a tax on you. It's a right. tax on the, on the person who wants to buy the, the two liter bottle of soda. Right. Uh, and it, it's, it, we, I felt it was always well worth it. Um, and, and it's been shown, I think Drexel just did this, Drexel University just did a study talking about the equitable nature of the tax. Uh, and that, and the people, the, the other thing they were throwing out there was that this is a tax on poor people because poor people drink a lot of soda, which I think is pretty, 
pretty biased thing to say anyway. Um, and um, so it's it worked out well. I mean, I think and I think it's really doable for other jurisdictions to do it. I, I'm, we had a lot of intense intense opposition because we are in an area with bottling companies and we're in an area where the Teamsters, one Teamster local represented all those drivers. Um, and that's where that the, the opposition came from. But if you're in an area that's, uh, you know, doesn't have bottling plants or those kind of things, I, I don't think it's that hard. Yeah, I like to tell people that I think you took one for the team when it comes to thinking about the sort of legal political ramifications of doing this kind of a thing. And nobody is crazy about a new tax on anything, right? But but when you weigh the pros and the cons <clears throat> of being able to invest in the kinds of things that you all are doing now and <clears throat> through that tax, I think the the evidence is now is now there um, that this is a worthwhile thing to. Pursue. And we also had we also have prominent members of the clergy that were for it uh, and went and actually Pastor Hall, who was a well known. Uh, uh, you know, pastor in a, a large church in Philadelphia actually did uh, commercials for us. Um, you know, talking about it's actually for the kids, uh, and we have to do something for our children. And uh, you know, don't worry about you know the extra ten cents or twenty cents you're spending on a big bottle of sugar. Right. Well, so we'll put we'll put some links to some of the great resources you all have on sort of how you're using the money and, and the kinds of outcomes you're getting from your prepaid program um, up with this with this video so folks can check it out. But I just want to thank you again for oh, sharing pleasure. your experiences with us today. Um, we are certainly going to be continuing to follow the amazing work that's going on there. And I think that's all that we have time and for. If you're ever having a bad day and you want to uplift your day, go visit a pre-K. Yes, of, I believe that. A lot, of, believe a, lot of, that. a lot of fun. Yes. Thanks so much, Mayor Kenny. Take care. Good luck. To learn more about how communities like Philadelphia are funding their early childhood programs in creative ways, visit our website at childrensfundingproject.org. And thanks so much for watching.